in the heart of Uttarakhand, amid the serene hills of Bhimtal, there lives a man who has dedicated his life to the conservation of butterflies and moths. Meet Peter Smetachek, the Butterfly Man of India and the founder of the Butterfly Research Centre. Peter's passion for butterflies goes back to his childhood. His father, Fred, a Central European immigrant, had established an insect collection at their home in 1946. Later on, the family moved to Uttarakhand after World War II and this is when Peter's passion found wings. His colonial era home serves as a sanctuary and laboratory. It is surrounded by a dense forest, rich in biodiversity, hosting 243 species of butterflies and more than 800 species of moths. With unwavering dedication and passion, Peter decided to establish the Butterfly Research Centre in 2010. Well, I had been working on butterflies and moths since childhood and when I was doing uh, publications in scientific journals, it became necessary to not give a home address. People felt that a formal address would be useful. In 2010, uh, 2009, my mother passed, so her room became empty. So we decided to move the collection into that room and open it up to the public. So in 2010, we, uh, around May, April, May, we made the Butterfly Research Center. And since then, it has been functioning and all the scientific work goes on in the name of the Butterfly Research Center. The Butterfly Research Center showcases an extensive collection that includes India's largest butterfly, the Golden Birdwing. One of the four rooms in its bungalow is dedicated only to butterflies. Well-made wood and glass frames hang on the walls, each containing 30 to 40 specimens of butterflies. So when this chap needs to fly, he will open his wings. And when he opens his wings, then this is what the bird will see. The bird will see the orange and blue butterfly goes and sits in a bush. At the age of 25, Peter was invited to deliver a lecture series at the Oxford University Entomological Society where he discussed the use of butterflies and moths as bioindicators, a topic still pertinent today. During the 1980s, I figured that uh, butterflies and moths can be used to indicate the health of a forest. Now, there's no, no measure for uh, the health of a forest. And I thought that, well, it would be good if we could do that, so that at least we can distinguish between a good forest and a bad forest, which we don't have at the moment. So I figured that it, I would use bioindicators, that is, the population or the community of insects in an area could tell us about or give us insights into the forest in that area. Now, when I started that, I thought, of course, that all the moths and butterflies would be easy to identify. Butterflies were well known, moths I assumed were good. So then I, the, the uh, mecca of uh, insect people is the British Museum in London which is called the Natural History Museum now. So I started sending specimens there and requesting identification and I found out that there was nobody who knew these things. So I said, well, can you tell me who does know about it? It turned out there was nobody in the world who knew about it. So if I did want to use insects as bioindicators, I would actually have to identify them myself. So I stopped other things and for 20, 25, 30 years, I spent my time mastering, you can never master, but getting familiar with moths. While he was gaining expertise in the field, Peter's collection swelled with new additions from all over the country. Today, his collection of moths and butterflies is the largest private collection in India with over 3,500 species. The Butterfly Research Centre is testament to Peter's dedication to the conservation of butterflies and moths. His legacy will continue to inspire future generations.